What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys PeeWeeGo. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I wanted to show you guys PeeWeeGo and if you guys have never heard of it, it's an open source photo collection software that you can install on a web server. And I'll be using Ubuntu for this demonstration, just show you guys how to get it set up and everything. But this application is super cool and it's targeted as a replacement for Google Photos. So if you wanna have total control over the photos that you take on your various devices, then this is a good server to set up for yourself. So let me go over to the website so I can show you guys a little bit more about this application. So as you can see, I'm at peewego.org. That's the URL for the actual application. And I also had a link down in the description of the video so you guys can click on it at your convenience. But as you can see, it says manage your photo collection with Peewego. Uh, Peewego is an open source photo gallery software for the web designed for organization, teams, and individuals which is what it says. The version though, the current version is 11.5.0 uh, and it was released. It looks like May 14th, 2021. So it's was, so it was pretty recent, a couple months ago, so to speak, but uh, thousands of organizations and millions of individuals love PeeWeeGo. And I like these types of applications. Like I have another application that I wanted to show you guys. It's called Ampachi but that one focuses in on all your music and you can connect to that and actually listen to your music from the web. And this application pretty much works the exact same. It's just set up on a web server and it mainly is focused on photos. But if we go down a little bit further, it says why choose PeeWeeGo? Uh, high volume PeeWeeGo shines uh, when it comes to classifying thousands or even hundreds of thousands of photos. Uh, born in 2002, uh, PeeWeeGo has been support, supporting its users for more than 19 years. So that, that lets you know this project has been around for a very long time. People have been constantly maintaining this actual project. So you shouldn't have no issues with the project going under once you start using it. But you never know. Things change. Someone could, you know, drop out of it. But I think they have a, a good team that's continuing to maintain this project but if we go back up here it says open source uh source code is available editable auditable and extendable thanks to the plugins and themes so that's one cool thing about it it does have a lot of plugins and themes for the actual software but if we scroll down a little further it says uh powerful features uh album hierarchy batch management themes and plugins permission control so and then that's another thing about it. You can actually share this stuff. Just like on Google Photos, you can share the photos. And I know a lot of this stuff can be done in own cloud or next cloud. You know, you can just put up your documents up there. And I know that's kind of a Google Drive alternative, those two applications. But this one mainly focuses on the photos. So super dope. And this is the example of the galleries they have set up. Uh, and here's some reviews right here if you want to read that uh and it says get started with it they have a, a pretty good community with it uh documentation guides you know getting started all that good stuff um down at the bottom and then also some contact information so you get email you know and all that stuff and here is a demo of it uh that's a page of features examples you know change log testimonies and all that good stuff so that's all I wanted to show you guys on this page, but if you need help setting it up or if you want to see some documentation, they do have the documentation in here. So let me click on get uh, get that. But it's uh, two ways to actually get this thing set up. You can set host it on your own. You can, you know, self host or you can opt to get one layer cloud hosted uh, servers and they can manage everything for you as far as install updates, you know, backups, fully managed uh and they do have a trial period and i believe you it costs after that i'm not 100 percent sure but uh you can host it on their cloud if you want to or you can you know like i said self self host it which is what the process i'm gonna show you guys today and then they also have a peewee go mobile app 
which is you know good i mean the reviews in the play store didn't look too well look too good as far as the reviews that people left but a lot of people have actually downloaded the mobile app i think it said like thirty thousand people have downloaded the mobile app and it's only like a few of them that that have left negative reviews so i'm not sure about the other ones you know what i'm saying so it could be a good application it's just a few uh people that put reviews up there based on where the app was at the time but we can go to the but let's go to the install guide because that's basically what i'm gonna follow i'm gonna have to deviate from this and that's because i want to show you guys how to set it up on ubuntu server it's a lot of command line stuff i'm gonna set up the database because it has to have a back-end database for it so we can get to the install portion of it but like i said this is a step-by-step -step guide it's only four steps uh download the full archive upload the archive content you know configuration and then first connect and then you'll be good to go uh and this kind of shows you from a windows perspective so i'm gonna be showing you guys from a linux perspective uh as far as just making all the changes on the server you know locally and one of the prerequisites for this you need to have a lamp server already set up so you need to have you know linux apache mysql or marion db and php installed on the server and there are a couple other dependencies that i want you to install as well that'll help with the application some php mods and all that stuff uh just a few applications i'll walk you guys through setting those up as well now let's go down and get started right fast so we can walk through the whole process okay cool so we're ready to go i already have my lamp server set up like i stated i'm sshed into it and there are a couple packages that i need to install they are basically php packages and i'll add the list or show the list right now but that's basically the pa packages i have them listed down in the description of the video but these packages need to be installed on the lamp server so we can get we go install so let's go down and uh install those packages now and the reason i just wanted to show them to you guys because i'm not going to type them all out i'm just going on paste them in here uh just paste basically the command to install it and actually let's go back and let's type sudo apps install and then all those packages and they're basically you know like i said my my sql packages uh packages for apache like modules uh, for php you know and just various other packages that are needed unzip you know zip uh php curl so let's go on and install those right now boom and let's type in our sudo password and go through and install all those packages right fast and what you want to do before you install these packages you want to make sure the system is up to date which i didn't show but that's something that you want to do you always want to want a sudo apt update sudo apt upgrade which i i did before i actually showed you all this stuff but that's the list of those packages i'm gonna go on and take them out of the screen you guys don't need to see them anymore but that's what's getting installed so i'll be back when it actually finish it, finishes all right cool so all those applications are installed or you know packages installed now i need to go down and make some modifications to php and i'll show you guys how to actually do that let's type sudo nano and then uh etc and then it should be php and then let me tab it out yeah 7.4 and then apache and then the php uh dot i and i file that's what we want to modify right fast so uh, let's open this up and you can go through make modifications to this if you need to just make sure you know what you're looking for know what you're doing and what we're looking for is the memory uh limits and we would just want to change that up and just make make changes to the um, the amount of size for the memory and let's actually search for it so we could type uh control w and that'll search and then let's just type memory and then I type the whole thing out so we make sure we find the line. So memory limits uh, is the option that we're trying to change. So as you can see right now, it's set to 128. Let's go down and turn this, bump this up to 256. So let's type uh, 256. Boom. And let's look for something else right fast. So I'm going to uh, hit Control W again. That way we can search. 
and basically what we're looking for is the upload max file size so i'm gonna type that in right fast so upload underscore uh, max and then underscore file size and let's press enter and that'll find that line for us and as you can see right now it's set to one megabyte and let's go down and bump this up to a hundred megabytes you know just just in case so let's go on and hit uh control x and then we want to save so let's just type y press enter and that'll make those changes to that actual file now that we made those changes let's go on and uh restart the apache server right fast so we can just type sudo system ctl restart and then apache 2 boom and so it restart the apache server so we good to go all right cool so the next thing we need to actually do is create the databases for peewee go so uh let we need to log into our marion database right fast so we can create those uh that database and we don't have to create any tables or anything we have to create a user account as well so it can make changes to the actual database or write things to the database create the tables and all that stuff so let's go through that process now and the first thing we need to do is actually log in to the mysql database or marion db so we can type sudo uh, mysql and then dash u and then that's for our user and we want to log in as root and then dash p boom and it'll access for our root password or our sudo password boom log into it now we're good to go now let's go down and create that database and it's very simple to do so you just type create uh database and then we want to name it you can name it whatever you want to but we're gonna name it peewee go and then underscore db and sorry about that so peewee go and then underscore db and you kind of want to use a naming convention uh, typically especially if you're going to have more than one database on here but if this server is just set up for specifically peewee go then you don't have to use any type of naming convention you could do uh peewee go by itself i just put the under underscore db because i'm so used to putting the underscore db behind all the different databases that i create so let's type in the uh, semicolon at the end and that'll create that database. And as you can see, it says query, okay, one row affected. So we created that database. Now, the next thing you wanna do is create that user. So the very simple command, just create user. And then you wanna put a single colon and then the account that you wanna use. So you could do peewee go underscore user as the name and then you want to put that single quote in there and then at symbol and then you put a single quote again and what we want this uh account created for is a uh, local host so it's a local host account boom single quote and then identified by and then this is where you want to put your password and make sure you spell identified i always misspell it uh, let me look through it just to make sure I D E N T I F I E D. So identified by, and then you want to put your password there. I'm going to just put password and then that's fine. And then let's go down and put the semicolon at the end and press enter and that should work. So we got our account created. We got our database created. Now the next thing you want to do is grant all the permissions for that user account. So all we have to do is type grant all on kiwi go underscore db and then you want to put a period and then store and that basically states for anything under that database this person don't have permission to and then two we want to specify the account after this so let's do a single quote and then let's type in that account that we created so the pw underscore user and remember what that password is because we're going to need it later that password and the user account so you want to make sure you have those you know saved somewhere or you at least you know what that password is because otherwise you're going to go in and change it uh but localhost and then let's put the single quote quote at the end or single single quote at the end and then identify by and then we can put our password in there again 
and then we want to give it a uh, width grant permissions or grant option I give it that grant permissions as well so and we put a semicolon at the end we're good to go let's run it hopefully it works it says query okay uh, zero rows affected so we're good to go now let's go on and um, save the changes and basically what this does is flush uh, the privileges so you want to type that in that's the command is flush privileges anytime you make a uh, account changes you want to uh, run this command so it'll flush the privileges and get everything good to go so you can actually connect to the server and let me make sure I spelled this right uh, privileges and no I didn't see e e s boom press enter all right cool so now we can uh, type exit and then we put a colon at the end of it boom that'll get us out of Marin DB and we have successfully modified and set up our databases our user accounts so now we get to go to install the actual server all right cool so the next thing we need to do is actually download the latest version of Pee Go. so let me switch back over to my website or my browser and let me go back to the home page uh, actually that's it get uh, Pee Wee Pee Wee Go and then right here this is what we need so basically you just right click on it uh, you guys probably can't see that but all I'm doing is right clicking on the download link and just hit copy link address and that'll get us the full link for the download and we can use that we can use the curl command to actually get the latest version so I'm gonna paste that in the terminal let's switch back over to the terminal right fast so I can show you guys the curl command right fast let's go on uh, and clear and let's type a uh, curl and then let's type a uh, dash O because I want to name it uh, and let's just name it Pee Wee Go dot zip that's why I want to name it. instead of the long full name uh, it's gonna save it in my home directory as you can see we are in our home directory by the tilde so and that's that link I copied right there as you can see it downloads the latest version so let's go down first enter It'll download it right fast and save it in my home directory. And let's go down in uh, ls this directory so you guys can actually see it. But that's the zip file right there. And what you want to do is extract that zip file. And we can go down and do this in one swoop by using the unzip command. And we can specify a location where we want the files to be unzipped to. So let's type uh, sudo because we have to type sudo because of the location that it's stored in or we're writing it to or unzipping it to and let's use the unzip command which i just tabbed it out just to make sure it was installed but unzip and then we want to use that uh peewego.zip file and then we have to use another option which is dash d and then now let's specify the location we want it in which is for www.html uh, and that's where I want to put it at. And if you have virtual host and you want to make sure you have that directory that you want to extract it to already created, and then you can extract all the files to that location. So let's press enter, boom, and it's going to go on and extract everything to that location. And it actually creates a folder called PeeWeeGo. And we get ls the directory right fast just to show you guys, but ls var www uh, html boom press enter as you can see you have a Pee Wee go uh, folder already there and that's where everything is located at the moment okay so one of the things you want to do uh, now that we know the files are there and everything you want to go down and change the permissions uh, and what you want to do is give ownership to the www-data user and group so let's go down and type that in right fast uh, by using the ch own command so let's type sudo ch own and then we want to use the dash or because that's for recursive or capital or just to make sure you guys know but it's a uh, dash or that's for recursive and that'll basically give those permissions from top to the bottom of that directory that we specify and the ownership i mean so let's type uh www underscore data and i'm gonna tab it out and then that i'm gonna put a colon there and then we want to also specify the group so w data uh 
dash group. And then now let's specify that directory, right? Fast of war, www, uh, HTML, and then let's type PI, uh, that directory. And let's press enter and we're good to go. So it changed those permissions. And then also let's change the actual permissions and not the ownership. I keep saying permissions, uh, but I'm talking about the ownership first that I just changed. And now I need to change the permissions. So let's go down and do that now. And what you use to change the permissions is chmod, not chown. So let's type sudo uh, chown and then dash or capital or and then 755 is the permissions that we want to get this directory. So let's hit var uh www uh html and pi wi basically that same directory let's press enter and that'll put those permissions from the top to the bottom of that directory as well all right so the next thing we actually need to do is set up virtual host or really this is what you need to do if you plan on setting this up for production you know a production environment and you want this to actually be on the internet which i'm not gonna set mine up like that you know what i'm saying i'm gonna uh create mine and modify the configuration file so i can access it on my local network but i want to at least show you guys the process so you can Follow what I'm doing in case you want this access outside the internet. Now, one other thing I would recommend you do is set this thing up with a cert, a SSL cert. That way all your connections to the server is encrypted. But since I'm doing it on my local network, you know, I don't have to really worry about that. But if you're setting this up in the cloud somewhere, you want to put a cert on it. That way everything is encrypted. Can't nobody get a copy of your pictures as they're transferring back and forth from the actual website because it'll be encrypted now i've done plenty of videos showing you guys how to set up virtual hosts and setting up different websites you know you can host multiple websites on apache from one server which is basically what virtual hosts are so let me go walk through how to set up the virtual host file you basically go in and create a configuration file for your website and you create a configuration file for each website that you put on here in the same way you just have to specify really you just have to specify the location of the website so the server can when it gets a request to its ip address and it looks at the url it can say okay so all the requests for this url this is the directory of the website so that's basically all it's doing now let's go through and do this right fast so we can uh cd to the directory right fast just to make it simple but um let's type cd uh etc and then we need to go to apache 2 and then we need to go to sites available we need to go to that directory and press enter and then as you can see in here there's already a default config and what we want to do is just go down and make a copy of that default config so we could just go copy uh zero zero dash default dot config and we want to rename it or name it something else we want to name it for the peewee go so let's type peewee go dot conf and that's what we want to name it you know as it copies it so let's press enter and we have to uh run these run this using sudo because we don't have permissions in that directory but there we go so we're good to go so if we ls this directory again you should see a peewee now let's modify that one by typing a uh, sudo nano uh peewee go boom dot config and let's go in here and modify this right fast first we want to specify the document root and we already know what it is uh it's the peewee go uh directory underneath it so let's just add that right there we're good to go so it's bar www.html forward slash peewee go now let's just go down and uh i'm gonna use the example up here but there is a server name and this is something we need to modify as well or add to the config and let me tab it out so it'll match up to the location of that but let's go in and just create something right fast i'm gonna just name it uh peewee go uh peewee go dot test so i'm gonna just name it dot test and i'm gonna go into my host file and add this domain name to my host file so i can connect to this url on my local network 
Um, and if I add it to my host file, it, each time you do a request or you're looking for a website, you know, it always does a DNS query just to find out what the IP address of is the server. But if you have it specified, it checks your host file. And if you have it specified in your host file, what the IP address is for a domain name, it will stop there and go to the IP address instead of, you know, searching the internet. So that's one way to kind of get around it because if I type this into my browser now, you won't be able to find this, uh, the peewego.test. But once I add it, make those changes to my host file, then I'll be able to find this domain name. So also, and actually I'm gonna take the www off of there cause I don't really, I don't really need it. I'm gonna just leave peewego.test. That's what I'm gonna type in when I, in my browser when we actually go to it and finish the configuration of it. Now it's a couple of options you wanna uh, add in here. Let me go down and do that right fast. But uh, let's go in and type in the left arrow and the right arrow and I'm gonna go in the middle of it uh, and type directory and then var www.html forward slash p i w i g o that's the directory and we want to put that in there right fast and we want to give it a couple of options so let's go in here and type in the options we need so let's type options and then what we want to do is hit the plus arrow or the plus button and type follow sim links. So we want the server to follow sim links for this website. So let's type that in right fast. And then also let's go and type in allow overrides. So let's type that in as well. Allow override and then all. Oh. And that's what we want to type in and actually Let's tap that out as well and I don't like the all uh, caps all uh, I'm gonna just type that in that way that that'll work and then let's type in require all granites and that's another option you want to put in there and let's press enter and let's close this directory little area out by just typing those arrows again so let's go left arrow and then in order to close it out you got to put a forward slash in there and then let's type directory and I spelled that wrong there we go so directory and then let's close that out by putting another uh, arrow to the right and we're good to go and it already has our error logs in there that we don't need to make any changes there but that's pretty much it for it and i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna uh, make a changes to my host file to point to the ip address of this server for that domain name uh so let's save this right fast let's hit uh control x uh y boom press enter good to go now since we're done with the configuration file let's go on and enable the site and this is a special command you got to do so it's basically sudo uh, a2 for basically apache 2 enable site and i'm gonna tab it out so we ain't got to worry about it and then i'm gonna type in that config so peewego.config press enter good to go and so it enabled that site as you can see right there it enabled it uh it didn't have any errors in it it didn't even see it see any issues now one other thing we need to do is enable the rewrite mod that's one of those things that we specified in the configuration file the rewrites uh, we have to enable that mod and that's one of those modules that we installed php modules that we installed in the beginning so let's type that in right fast so let's just go sudo and then it's basically the same type of command that we just ran to enable the site but we're basically enabling a mod so it's a2 pretty much the same en for enable and then mod boom and then rewrite and spelled it wrong so rewrite there we go boom press enter and now they it enabled that module for us so we're good to go now the next thing you want to do is restore the patchy that way everything will work so let's type sudo system ctl uh restore and then apache boom and press enter and that'll restore the server and actually let's get out of that directory uh but we are good to go with that. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually install PWG. But what up, before I do that, I'm going to exit out and I'm going to go into my 
host file, my local host file, uh, so I can make changes so we can actually get to this server. And as you can see, this is what the IP address is, and that's basically what we want to put in there. We want to put the peewego.test points to this IP address. So let's copy that right fast. I'm gonna just copy the IP address right there. And let's type sudo nano uh, host. And actually, I'm sorry, uh, etc host. And it's host with a an S. And if we press enter, and what you want to do in this file once you have it open is basically go in and add the IP address. And you can go down to the bottom. And I'm showing you in another file. I did this on my local system, but I'm showing you in the file on my server just so you guys can actually see how to do it. But basically, all you got to do is put in the IP address and, and the URL. So that's basically peewego dot test was the url that i put in the apache configuration file so that's basically all you got to do right there and then save this i'm not going to save it because i already did it on my local file and i didn't want to do show you guys on my local file because uh, i have some sensitive ip addresses in there i didn't want to share on the internet but we get to go with this right here so now let's go to the ip address and or actually the domain name right fast all right, cool. So I got my browser set up. Now let's go down and go to the website. And it's basically peewego.test is the domain name that I created. And it should bring up the installation. And this is the final step in the installation process. I know we kind of went through, you know, it was kind of long, but let's go through this right fast. But basically, uh, right here, you want to put in a user account for the data database. And what we named it is peewego dot underscore user and then the password i just put password that's why i said you need to remember this stuff uh, when you create it so password and then the database name is peewego uh, underscore db boom and then this is the database table prefixes so that's how it'll create the tables it'll put peewego underscore and then whatever that table name is now let's go down and create a user account and I'll just name it admin. And then let's type in a password for this thing, uh, for the account. It's basically setting up the uh, administrator account. So uh, just type in a password for it. And then also let's type in an email address. You could put in whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna just put keep it techie at test.com. Cause it doesn't matter. I'm finna delete this thing after this. Uh, and I'm gonna unsubscribe. I'm not gonna subscribe to any of this stuff. And then hit the start installation button, and it'll go through and finish the installation. And it's hit never. And as you can see, congratulations, Peewee installation is complete. So now when you go to it, it should go right to this page. Uh, and this is how you add uh, pictures to it. So this will bring you to the actual main page of it. Uh, they have different themes, you know, they have a lot of different tools up in here. And right now we're logged in as the admin. Uh, you can create new users, so you can create groups, uh, notifications, you can create albums, photos. Uh, this is the main dashboard. You know, it gives you some information on the system. So activity, you know, the amount of percentage of space that's used, uh, you know, and then you can add plugins. They have a lot of plugins for it. So you can activate admin tools, language switcher, local file editor, you know, take a tour, all that stuff. Uh, you can check for updates from here. Uh, you can update the system, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, other plugins available. If you click there, this is where all the plugins. So as you can see, it's got a lot of stuff in here. Microsoft 365. And you can search right here or filter by a name. So if you know what you're looking for, you can type that in here. Uh, you can sort the order as well. So just go through this. This has a lot of stuff in it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of tools. So people are actually developing for plugins for this actual application. It's super cool. They even have a dark, dark theme. So you guys know I like dark themes. That's <laughs> how I, I do it. But 
that's there for you so you can you know see better on your screens uh, but they also have some tools right here I'm not gonna go through all this stuff you know I just wanted to kind of show you they do have a lot of options for this thing they even have themes down up in here so you can go through and add some themes to it and it'll show everything that it has installed so active themes right here inactive themes you can add new themes uh, so people are actually create themes for this thing you can go through and modify it however you want to but this thing has a lot of features a lot of tools in it you know you can go to the help me you know all that good stuff uh, and get more information about using peewee but so i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions please leave questions down in the comment box below you all you guys know i like to talk about these different things and uh show you guys open source applications that are super cool and i think are interested this thing right here is definitely great to replace google photos especially since they're about to start charging for space and it's not going to be available for other android phones i think you have to be on the google Fi network in order to get the unlimited which they used to have unlimited space if you are using it and i believe they're lowering that size and they're not going to keep the photos in the original format if you want them stored in the original format on google photos but i definitely think this thing is worth the look out look at you know what i'm saying you can install it on your own server or bps and get it set up and running but i hope you guys have a good night and keep it techy